This is a poem called Bourgeois Resolution. A poem in three voices for added fourth part harmony. This is the PDF which I've printed out. And the poem is uh, designed or written to be read as a matrix. It can be read in columns in single voices, the voice of thesis, the voice of antithesis and the voice of synthesis. There's an unseen fourth column which is Dear Reader, You. Um, the poem can also be read in sequence, so the thesis, antithesis and synthesis read in sequence as a dialogue uh, gives you a fourth presentation of the whole. So what this is supposed to abstract is the idea of context and how a point of view placed in relief or contrast with another point of view creates a further possible point of view or possible points of view and this is the reaction that I have found within myself to a prescribed reality which uh, corresponds to what I would understand now as being a, a, a bourgeois uh, aesthetic. All that is good, all that is allowed, all that is permitted is bounded by, regulated by and judged by this broad bourgeois aesthetic. And I like the French um, delineation of bourgeois from the grand bourgeois to the haute bourgeois to the moyen bourgeois to the petit bourgeois which is more subtle than the British class categories um, and yet more poetic than demographic uh, profiling you know, your A's, your B's, your C1, C2s, and the, you know, the, the, uh, the things that focus groups get excited about. And so what this is really about is transcending the bourgeois sensibilities, the bourgeois restrictions and boundaries to allow a self-expression of those of us that don't feel represented by those bourgeois sensibilities and that is what this poem as a whole uh, seeks to try and express from within me and I've been inspired by reading Shelley's essay on In Defence of Poetry recommended by Cornell West, I mean, I've been inspired by Cornell, Cornell West with his uh, blues man in the world of the mind, jazz man in the world of ideas, um, and other people as well uh, have inspired me to look outside of my own bourgeois uh, conditioning, and one of those seminal turning points for me was hearing uh, Dr. Abdullah um, of Black Lives Matter, the professor of Af Pan-African Studies, when she was explaining that Black Lives Matter were not endorsing a candidate, which didn't mean they were telling people not to vote, it was saying, or they were saying, don't get your expectations up because voting isn't supposed to change anything and so you'll find a, 
a theme running through with that as well. The other things I've been looking at to try and find a way to transcend my own peculiar prejudices uh, it's been radical feminist revolutionary theory and also uh, revolutionary Christian uh, theory um, Cornell West again is very good on that uh, but there are others um, and the civil rights struggle um, and looking at these this broad sweep of ideas looking for identity groups transcending the prescribed ideal of the power structure the power elite to give voice to their own or our own cultures unique creative and productive impulses knowledge knowing thoughts another thing about thoughts is the idea that language isn't a tool for speech, it's a tool for thought, and speech is a byproduct of thought, a jolly useful one. And Shelley says in his essay that a poem on the page is a mere shadow of the conception, the, the, the imagination which is flowing through the poet. And I feel that is actually true of all art, which comes as an outward expression of what we feel within us and try hard to share. And so hopefully some, some of what this poem tries to express will come across.